93.95 KISS, San Antonio's rock station. Jimmy here, and I have the honor and privilege to talk to one of the best bands in rock today. Deadsy Elijah Blue is on the line with me. What's going on, man? What's going on, brother? Oh, not a whole lot. I'm just here waiting for the show tomorrow night at Sunset Station, completely sold out with the Deftones. Uh, how is the tour going so far? The tour is going great, man. You know, it's, it's um, I think... Uh the cool thing about this tour has been that, you know, you get to see sort of, you know, one of the great legacy acts of alternative heavy music, the Deftones, and, and uh, you know, I feel that we're, even though we've been around a while, we're still one of the newer generation of, of alternative heavy bands, so I feel like it's a little bit of like a torch kind of passing, torch holding, whatever, you know, I think it's it's a real cross-pollination of, of the fans, so, you know, we're, we're it's a good fit, it's a, it's a really good fit, because we're both, you know, two bands that, that sort of press the press the envelope and are, and are not interested in, in the trends, and, and you know, we, we sort of go to our own drummer, and so that's, you know, that's, that's what was exciting about the prospect of the tour to begin with when we first, you know, started talking about it on Family Values. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask, too, because I know uh, Deftones is on Family Values as well, and y'all did uh, one, uh, had one of the earlier slots. And uh, is that when y'all decided to uh, start talking about maybe doing a tour together? Exactly. They, they, they were already, obviously, touring and, and having everything set around their album coming out, and so, you know, everyone, obviously, was, was curious who the support act was going to be, and so we had sort of mentioned that we would love to do it, and they thought about it, and then, you know, they were, they were really stoked, and then they, they invited us to come along. Oh, nice. And on the tour so far, best city or maybe a really good date, you know, most memorable, maybe something totally insane happened Man, at one of the shows? Night, the first night was pretty amazing in Oklahoma City. I got to tell you, the, 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 the kickoff show was, was pretty great. And the second night in Los Angeles, Friday night, was, was last Friday was amazing. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I, you know, people were telling me a lot, like, on the Desi message board, talked to some of the kids on there, and they were saying some good things about the shows going on out on the West Coast. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, I think since we've just been with Family Values and, and all these southern cities and, and the eastern seaboard, we didn't do much western seaboard on Family Values. It was, you know, it had been the first time that we had been in, in places like Seattle and San Francisco um, in three years, four years. So, um you know, we're really excited to get back to the places that we've already been, um, where you know where we have a lot of um, fans and when and, and where the sort of you know it's it's sort of hot, if you will, because we were just there with Family Values. So we're start as we now traverse across back the country. You know, we we um, we're starting to sort of you know see what we had already the, the bedrock that we had laid with the fans from Family Values starting to kind of flourish, and and you know it's it's um, you know a lot of people are coming out for the show. Okay, now for some of the new people out there, maybe the uninitiated, if you want to vote it one way, uh, what yeah. exactly is Deadsy? Like, who who are they? Like, where did it come from? What was the catalyst that started the band? Well, the catalyst that started the band was just a couple of buddies from school, you know, like most bands. You know, myself, uh, you know, Dr. Nerf, you know, Ren Hockey, and uh, Alec Pure, the drummer, we, we all are, are schoolmates, and so you know, we just... We wanted to create a band. You know, you often hear this. You know, we, we heard a sound that no one else was doing and that we wanted to, to, to sort of bring into being. That, you know, because we, we're such music fans, we wanted to sort of do what we hadn't heard yet, do a, do a, do a hybrid of music that hadn't been, you know, sort of touched upon um, and, and then see through that what just the natural sort of kind of colors of all of our personalities would, would sort of bring to the situation like anybody. I mean, that's what makes a band special, not all the different components, but who the people are in the band and, and what their personalities, how they come through in the music. And so very much that's the case with this band. There's a lot of our personality in all the music, and, you know, that's what makes it such an, a, a, a highly individual, um, individualistic project. And, you know, we, we've obviously been doing it our way for a long time now. So, you know, for the uninitiated, this is a band that I would like to think is, is very much on the cutting edge, you know, with each album we release, I feel like we try to get, you know, m more, go go further than the last record in terms of still, in 2006, there are songs we can play that are 10 years old that still you can tell and you can see in the crowd that people are like, whoa, what is this new, you know, futuristic, strange, you know, space rock? So we, 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 we I guess, try to emulate and do what, what, I guess, Pink Floyd and bands like King Crimson were doing in their day. You know, we're, we're trying to carry that lineage, that torch. Um, so, you know, our sound is, as you know, is a very 
kind of it's a hybridized uh, mix of Sabbath and Brian Eno and Gary Newman, David Bowie, you know, a lot of the sort of 70s um, troubadours and the 70s, uh, you know, I- innovators and, 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 and progressive art rockers mixed with, with a real commercial sort of sensibility, and that's what the band always has been. Yeah, with like so, a nice, yeah. rich sound, really big, right? Yeah, very big, very big sound. All right, then the new album out, Phantasmagore, came out in, uh, back in August. Kick-ass yeah. album, by the way. It's, you know, Thanks, I, I, I managed to pick it up on the Family Value Store when I ca- caught y'all guys out there. Really awesome. good stuff. And uh, you know, I was real happy to pick it up out there, but I noticed when I listened to it, and it feels a bit more experimental, not necessarily like with uh, more electronics, but like less keys and more guitar. Now, is that something you guys wanted to do just right out, or did it just kind of work out that way? Yeah, we wanted to be a little bit more guitar oriented in terms of the my second guitar player Carlton uh, Megalodon. We wanted his guitar work to be more like uh, kind of Daniel Ash, uh, Jesus and Mary Chain. We wanted it to sort of you know pay homage to the shoegazer bands from England of the early '80s and the post punk era kind of guitar work of people like Bernard Sumner from Joy Division. That was something that we wanted very much to bring in more to the second Dead Zoo record um, because that's what it, it was the spirit of the songs, you know. So if you can, there's a nice balance between the synthesizer and, you know, more of a um, sort of, uh, you know, the, the, the keyboards are played down a little bit more, but there's a lot of presence still. It's just we went for different type sounds. We went for different textures. Uh, we went for more of sort of, uh, you know, Wendy Carlos, who was the great, uh, synth pioneer who did the Clockwork Orange soundtrack and the famous album Switched on Bach, the, the experimental keyboard um, orchestral record. So we were going for a lot of things that, again, you know, none of a lot of our contemporaries or peers we can relate to on this level of wanting to sort of challenge ourselves and actually go into these musical domains. It's like, you know, most people are just worried about getting on the radio and making a good pop song. I think we're, we're one of the few bands that really want to to be artists, you know, and really explore, you know, the, the, the medium of music, you know, it's very important to us. So yeah, I we, gotcha. don't, uh, we don't, we don't play by the rules and that's, that's our greatest quality. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got you there. Now, do you feel that this was a natural progression from, uh, maybe the more electronic fueled music from your earlier days, or, uh, was this something you've really worked on that you wanted to progress into maybe something, uh, I guess a little bit harder? Yeah, we're, like we're, we're rockers in, in spirit. So, I mean, again, it's like we always do what's best for the song. So the song sort of dictates what then the arrangements and the style are. You know what I'm saying? That, that's kind of always been what the guiding light is. It's whatever the song kind of calls for, you know. Um, it, and that's a, good, that's a good thing because then you kind of always can go back to, then you always have a sort of beacon that you know what to stick to. So for us, it's we, we, we kind of, you know, intuitively sort of go where the song wants us to go. So with okay. these batch of songs, you know, it wanted it very much called for more of this kind of guitar guitar rock. Okay, yeah, uh, I can see where that's going. Like the lyrics might dictate where the the feel of the songs gonna be going. Like, uh, like say something off a of commencement, maybe like uh, yeah, yeah, like the arrangement, yeah, you know, kind of just come into being. You know, you just sort of listen. But, you know, I always feel that music kind of already pre-exists even before you record it. So. It's all about how well can you kind of listen, and then your mind sort of tells you, and your soul kind of tells you what needs to be there, and that's always been the way we've done it. Okay, now off of Fantasmic or maybe uh, even Commencement, which songs off of your work do you prefer, or do you really like to play live in front of people? 